Greetings everyone, my name is Josie and you are listening to the Yoga Local podcast. Welcome. Uh, we're talking about everything to do with um, creativity, imagination, and these are the concepts that we'll be weaving into practices both here in the studio and online for the next month. Um, and, you know, this is a really um, important conversation for me because I think um, our ability to bring about the lives that we really want to live kind of all hinge on our capacity to to dream and to imagine and to get excited about the possibilities. If you were to ask me um, if I was a creative type, um, I would say absolutely yes. But I know for a lot of people that they automatically would say, no, no, I haven't got a creative bone in my body. And um, I think that's a real shame and something that we need to question because, you know, if we if we have no creative force, creative power driving us through life, then what is it that's moving us forward into our, our dreams? And I have a massive capacity to dream. Um, that's one of the benefits of um, a mind like mine. Um, and it's um, to the point where some might question that I'm just never content. Um, and I tend to think now that that's a little bit of dream shaming going on. If that's a thing and if it's not a thing, I think it should be a thing. Um, and fortunately for me, um, I don't seem to have the capacity to, like I do in some areas of my life, um, to ignore that part of who I am or pack it away um, just to kind of conform to um, the limits of someone else's idea of, of what's, a, you know, what's um, acceptable to dream about. Um, and the reason I think is because I've had this experience of, you know, not following through on my dreams and um, it causes big problems. Um, so maybe you relate to this, um, getting into a rut, not following through on your ambitions, really um, just getting into that uh, monotony of, of working, working hard. Um, but it's like you're spinning wheels, you're treading in, um, you're treading in mud. Um, you know, health crises crop up, finances tend to take a nosedive. So if you're you know, feeling that way, if you're putting in the effort and yet still something's missing, th things aren't following through, then this is what this um, podcast stroke blog is all about. And it's for you. Because if that one thing is missing, then it could be your ability to tap into what the yogis call and the yoga tradition defines as kalpana. It's our untapped creative force. Um, so I'm going to invite you to um, explore um, this um, this power of Kalpana with me today um, and see if you can take the opportunity to plug back into your ability to dream. We were literally born with the ability to create. We're creative creatures. And to me, denying your creativity is like denying your soul existence. And you're going to perpetually be in a state of unfulfillment if you are constantly turning away um, from that part of who you are. I've decided pr um, pretty, um, well, relatively late in my life, right, that that's not for me. I'm not going to put up with that. And I don't want that for anyone else as well. And that's why this whole dream of this business was um, created. And this dream um, of building a business that can help people wake up to their own creative power and and live their most fulfilling life is, is what gets me up and out of bed in the morning. So what is Kalpana and apart from what I've already said, which I think is pretty clear, why should you care? So it's a Sanskrit word and it carries this, um, like all Sanskrit, it's not just meaning, it's not just syllables and sounds, it actually carries the essence of what it is within its, um, within its shell. So Kalpana is this untapped um, use of um, our imagination. 
And so it's intentional use of our imagination. So this is opposed to all that crazy kind of unhelpful, like um, uh, meanderings of the mind, the scatter, the scatterbrain kind of thing. You know, when your imagination just is jumping around all over the place, that's not what we're talking about. And that's another... Um, that's another Sanskrit uh, term that we can bring in, which is called Vilkalpa, the Vilkalpa, the random imaginings of the mind. Uh, they're not as helpful. They're pretty repetitive um, and they don't really um, create much creative force. Kalpana, on the other hand, is this intentional use of our imagination to kind of steer our ship, basically. So it's about harnessing our thoughts to shape our reality. And it's also behind that saying, be careful what you wish for, because it can work both ways. And we have to be really mindful of where we're moving and, and, and placing our attention and placing our energy and what we're dreaming of and, and what our mind is conjuring up. Um, because, yeah, be, be careful what you wish for. You could be leaning into negative, um, neg ne negative imaginations and, and constantly reaffirming um, those things that are, are not moving you forward in life and that's just as powerful our mind is powerful it's kind of um, we can use it in either way and what yoga practice does is start to help us redirect we direct our lower mind and all that dross all that garbage that we tell ourselves um, repetitively we start to turn our mind away from that and shift it to more to more cre um, more creative way of thinking and more creative imagination a more creative way of living and being and doing. So your thoughts have power, more power than you realise. Um, this is not something we get taught in school. You know, it's starting to trickle through in terms of, you know, coaching um, quarters, lifestyle coaching is, is, is all about this, business coaching. I hear it all the time in my entrepreneurial circles, you know, and mindset, it's a, you know, it's a big word, but, you know, it blows my mind that this is stuff that, is being extracted from, you know, a, a tradition that's been around for 5,000 plus, plus, plus years and has been practiced, like not just been talked about, practiced and the results realized. So, you know, we are, we have, we have this information and and yet we're we're kind of we've kind of turned our backs on it somehow for some reason, and we could go into all that for you know a whole another conversation about um, you know how you know how our internal and our innate abilities have been kind of suppressed over the years. Um, but anyway, like this is what yoga is helping us to remember: is to help us to remember we are like born in nature, amazingly equipped. Um, to create and um, Kalpana is like the the director of our of our life our director of the movie that we're creating where the power of our thoughts are going and I want you to start to think about where is your mind going what is the script that you are writing what is the story you are telling um, are you creating a story of triumph of possibility of potential and creativity or are you just stuck in that rut of thinking, well, that's not possible. It's not for me. It's in, and then that will be what is your reality in the end, because that's what you're putting your creative power behind. Even though you're not aware of it as creative power, it's still there. You're just using it for the wrong things. You're focusing that power in the wrong area. And we need to shift that. We need to change that. Why? Well, I've just created a few scenarios where you may, um, you know be able to relate to so this can show up in our work when we're like going through the daily grind and um, if you don't have like that creative force moving you forward in a positive direction you know your mornings are going to be pretty um routine waking up swinging your coffee trying to fight through the traffic getting irate at people cutting you up sitting at your desk feeling invisible despite working really hard, the promotions never seem to come your way, the exciting stuff always seems to go to someone else. That is classical, no creative power, no um, kalpana 
helping you to get unstuck. It's just keeping you resentful and even um, uninspired. Um, you lose your spark, you lose your fizz, and then you feel like it's never coming back, right? Um, so that's the career hamster wheel. Um, but there's also, you know, relationships where this can show up. So when our interactions start to become more obligatory, you know, they're like a check-in, they're like a, a to-do list, um, rather than like really feeling like you want to see and connect with someone, um, then, you know, that Kalpana is, is lacking, that driving force, that creative force is lacking. Um, and then conversations start to just skim the surface and leave you feeling a little disconnected and isolated. And again, that's this downward spiral. Um, yoga is about trying to redirect us, right? Redirect us into um, an upward spiraling evolutionary direction. Um, and it's that creative kalpana, imagination, driving force, something that's gonna lift us up and move us forward that's going to get us there. Um, finances, um, another area that you might be stuck in, right? Um, maybe you're already experiencing, you know, the, the whole getting your pay monthly, never really imagining that you're ever going to exceed, um, a kind of financial income that's going to help you create the future that you want. That future almost seems impossible. And the idea of ever having it is a distant dream. And because you've not got that creative, you know, force behind you, or you're not cultivating that, that force that's within you to envision the possibilities, you're not tending to it, you're not coming to it, you're imagining it, you're not visualizing it, you're actually doing the opposite. You're saying it's not possible. You're imagining life is going to be pretty rubbish and pretty d dismal and dull and, and lacking. And so guess what? you know, be careful what you wish for, because that's what you're going to end up with. And this is the whole philosophy behind um, um, practice and yoga. Um, so how do you get out? There's, you know, many ways I could talk about, you know, this, but, you know, we want to get out of this, this cycle um, and transform our life. And this is basically what we're teaching here at, at uh, Yoga Local. It's the traditional yoga. It's the traditional teachings. It's the t traditional practices. It's all this stuff that like, I don't know about you, but when I first started yoga, like I never heard of any of these Sanskrit terms. In fact, you know, most of the teachers that I know were actively told, do not use Sanskrit in class. You know, you're, it's not something that, you know, you're even encouraged to, to use. Um, it's, um, it's just so surface level in many areas that like, no wonder we don't feel empowered, right? We, we're being limited even in our yoga practice. And this really annoys me that that's still going on. And even like really good teachers, um, it's, um, you know, we're missing out. We're not, we're not giving the true scope of yoga and its potential. And um, the, the wisdom is already there. The wisdom is already there. And it's, it's, it's science. It's yoga science. And it's a science because it's been time tested. And um, the results are, um, the results are reliable, right? They, they are consistent. Um, and it's about, it's about time. <sighs> like, this is a real, really, um, this is a really hard um, thing to talk about because it's, it's, it's part of my dream um, to explain and explore and pass on these teachings to, um, to those of us that haven't got access to them. It's where I was not that long ago. I didn't have access to this. And when I did, it was just like a big, massive light bulb went off, off in my life. And so that's why we're so um, committed to like staying with the, the tradition and not serving up um, anything that's, you know, un, unrelated to, um, you know, un, un, unrelated in terms of it, there's, there's, there's no substance to them. There's, there may be strategy, but it's not got any legs to stand on. Um, there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing that we're doing here which is just for entertainment. It's, you know, 
it's that's the easy route for me it's like oh you know just keep people like entertained for an hour and then off off you go and on your merry way in your life but like wouldn't you rather have all the teachings all the necessary um information and um all the wisdom that's actually going to help you continue to grow in your life moving forward day after day week after week month after month year after year and not just have something that's served up just to make you feel good um, for five minutes. It's not what we do. Um, and yeah, some of these some of these terms, um, as I say, they might seem a little bit um, alien. And, you know, it's a different language. So that's something that we have to get our head around. But hey, come on. Like, <laughs> you know, we, we can't learn from always being in the known right what one mind already is happy with kind of um contemplating we have to kind of stretch um our capacity to to take in new new ways of thinking new ways of being new ways of doing and if we do that and if we allow ourselves to go through that process which can be hard um then the the guarantee is we will transform our life and you know it's massive like I've transformed my life um, through yoga and it continues to be transformed. Um, and yeah, my, I guess my big intention is for us to all start to, to start dreaming again and start to remember just how bloody awesome we all are, what we're capable of when we use our minds, which are powerful for the right things and we can steer them in a way that we want to move our life, then anything is possible. And, you know, it, I remember being in my first kind of teacher trainings thinking, you know, you know, Om Bhavam Namah, um, David G talking about, you know, I am pure potential and just like really kind of uh, drawing back from it. Um, you know, is, that's not, how could that be possible? And it is, it's a really hard, hard thing for us to lean into but we can lean into it and there's practices to help us to do that and the more that we do that the more capable we come so obviously i would love you to start to explore these teachings and expand your idea of what yoga is come and um, practice with us here at the studio and you know come and learn through some of the extra kind of workshops that we do that we also put on our on our app on demand um but um, let me give you something to keep you going, some practical steps that we can all do um, to start to really remember that we have this innate power within us. And it's just about learning how to unlock that. Okay, so practical steps. First of all, really simple daily visualization practice. Um, I encourage you to start your day, spend a few minutes before you wake up, before you pick up that phone, visualizing um, something calming, something, um, and we do this a lot in, in practice, especially tantric yoga practice, visualization is used a lot. Um, we use imagery of the moon, we use imagery of fire and flame, um, geometry, shapes, colors. Um, but if we just start with um, moon, the moon, and think of the qualities of the moon, the calming nature of the moon, um, the subtle kind of um, distribution of light that the moon um, provides. And that as, you, as you visualize that scene, you can, and you can and you will start to align with that, those qualities, with that energy frequency. And then just gradually increase um, visualization into your um, into your dreams. Okay, so start imagining, start to bring the qualities. What it would it feel like? What it would look like? What it would taste like to be living the life that you actually soulfully desire, rather than just going through the, the motions and just trying to get through the day, which is, you know, is a way to live, but it's no way to live. Um, so daily visualization practice and remember you can join us here at the at the studio online and start to learn some of these tip techniques start to build them into a daily practice a committed practice 
Um, and then um, before you go to bed, so morning and night, um, do some active dreaming and picture achieving that goal. As I said earlier, find the emotional thread that runs through it. Um, think about how it would feel to have that success and um, maybe even write down those um, ideas and how that feels in a journal and it's something that you can come back to. I know it does sound like really like basic, write down your dreams, but just do it just do it just try it um you will be amazed at just how it keeps you connected to what it is you want from life just the simple act of right visualizing it imagining it excuse me and writing it down and and start to set some higher goals like we kind of again put the ceiling on what was possible um i've done it in numerous areas of my life where it's kind of like well you know yeah, I can get to that point. And then like when you get, get to that point, it's like, oh, next, next level. And we always have this kind of um, friction as we move out of our comfort zone, out of what we think is possible into, and we break through our limits. And, you know, I want you to, to anticipate that discomfort. And in practice, we will help you learn how to be in that, that kind of um, discomfort of transformation. Um, but yeah, write down the goals that excite you and um, use your affirmations and your daily visualizations to keep reminding yourself of this goal. And then make um, those small steps, just, you know, the, the very baby steps that will lead you towards um, that goal today. And it could be something really small. Um, um, there's another... Um, podcast actually that no it's not a podcast it's just a blog it was back way in the day when I, um, I was just teaching uh, mostly um, from the, the Deepak Chopra school of yoga um, but he was um, something that stuck, stood out for me was his um, phrase um, uh, small small steps big benefits um, I'll perhaps put the link to that blog in the in the in the notes below um, but yes, small steps equal big, massive benefits. And, you know, I am like a living embodied experience of that. Um, and if you go back through these blogs, which are now over 10 years in the making, you will see just how I've shifted and transformed everything about my life from where it was to where it is today. And I'm not done. I'm still dreaming. That force is still there. And I firmly believe that that's going to you know, that's part of what keeps me thriving, keeps me feeling alive, keeps me feeling like, um, you know, I'm here for a reason. It's, um, it gives us me that purpose. It gives us that meaning. And it may, it means that life is, um, is more interesting and exciting and it feels more fulfilled. Um, and I think that's such a massive part of how we feel well in our life. So, Let's wrap it up. Um, I'm ending with a mantra for empowerment. And that is, I can be, do, have, create everything I desire so long as I believe in the possibilities. Okay, so incorporate these practices. Start to incorporate these teachings into your life. If your yoga practice currently is just sidelining all this stuff, um, in favor of just postures and poses and you want something more, then I encourage you to come and, and check us out either online or in our studio if, you're, if you happen to be local. I want you to let your imagination run wild and I want you to witness and enjoy as your life will transform like you have never thought possible. Um, if you are interested in going even more deeper into this idea of reimagining yourself, then I am holding a mini retreat um, on um, June the 24th. It's a Monday um, and it's the weekend of our fifth birthday. So we're going to be located in, um, in a yurt, so totally off grid. Um, and it's going to be from 11 till 3. Um, where we will be taking a real deep dive into the creative process and um, we'll be using some of these um, yogic wisdoms, teachings, methodologies um, 
to help you untap that creative potential force that's within you to start to dissolve through all those stories all those the cowpers all those unhelpful thinking patterns we're going to dissolve as many as those as we can and then start to shift that mindset into um, our innate goodness our innate ability to 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 be do and and move and shift our lives into any direction that we wish to so if you want to um, join us there, have more self-motivation, more self-reliance, have more potency in your life, whether it's in your career, in your relationships, in your business um, dealings, in your finances, in your emotional kind of landscape, then let's, like, let's start to um, tap into that creative force and start to transform our lives. And I'd love to see you there so the more details will be um in and around this um podcast but i hope you enjoyed that and i would really love to uh hear back from you if you've got any comments or questions just get in touch okay that's all for now take care